Well, we're very uh, pleased to uh, welcome our guest speaker. So, Anje Petit Markowski, if I say it all correctly uh, uh, with my American accent, uh, is the founder and CEO of Mobit, um, a Swiss startup working on 3D printing in construction. And uh, we're really, really excited to have you here. So I won't say any more. I'll let you go ahead and uh, and begin. And let me just make sure you have the sharing permissions. And Permission, I think yeah. you should be set up now. Good. So hi everyone, um, my name is Agnès Petit and Markovsky, I'm not using the, uh, my uh, old name anymore, but uh, yeah. So my name is Agnès Petit and I'm CEO and founder of Mobot. Um, maybe um, as a start, I just would like to highlight a bit um, my uh, background. So I have studied uh, geology um, at the University of Lausanne, mining geology actually. And then I was also like you all at ETH Zurich for um, a PhD, rather in a very, uh, well, academic um, aspect. So I was um, working on space science and extraterrestrial materials. So whenever you have complicated material, I, I know how to cope with that. And then I started my career in the construction industry by working for Holcim. At that time, it was called Holcim. Um, I was developing new um, product for Holcim, but also working on the commercial strategy there. So that's, well, that was a jump in the cold water for me at that time, because I was very technical, scientific, and suddenly I understood what marketing is, what the commercial strategy is. And I worked there for a couple of years worldwide. Um, and then I took a, a role which was very operative um, at Creabeton, which is a precast supplier in Switzerland. And again, I jumped into cold water because uh, I was facing what is the real, I would say, level of innovation in the construction industry. And that's where I uh, started yeah, working on 3D printing, first with plastic. And this was back in 2011, 2012. And I started uh, working on uh, 3D concrete printing back in 2014. So it took me quite um, some time to decide to found Mobot and to decide to, I would say, um, take the, the next uh, next jump and and the next uh, next uh, path. And today I'm very excited to 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 show you what we are doing at Mobot. So MOBOT stands for Mobile Robot because this is what uh, we aim for. And our mission is really to bring uh, automation and robotics of sprayed concrete. And we are focusing essentially on infrastructures. Um, so I will, I will uh, try to explain you a bit what we are doing and why we are doing this. Um, and first, uh, why we are doing this, this is for me the most important is um, you all heard about climate change. Uh, of course, you everyone is talking about climate change, but this slide is actually something that I was using already uh, three to four years ago. And at that time, uh, people were indeed talking about climate change, but um, um, I, I would say the measures and uh, really the, the reality of taking some measures to, to reduce the CO2 footprint in construction really is starting, I think, only now. Um, the second, uh, I would say, driver that drives the entire change in the construction industry is that there's a huge infrastructure financing gap uh, worldwide. And uh, we need to know that uh, if you want to create jobs and also um, uh, the entire economy of, of uh, the country um, lies uh, usually in the construction, seven to nine percent of GDP. Uh, is of a country is uh, usually coming from uh, construction and, and from infrastructure. And that's where um, I see that there's a huge need for sustainable infrastructures. And um, last but not least, uh, in some countries, we have a lack of qualified lab labors and probably you have all heard of these three arguments changing the, the industry. The construction industry for me what is the most important is that you have a lot of initiatives for digitalization in construction for building uh, but in infrastructure is still lacking uh, 
quite a, a lot. And that's what we want to, to change with Mobot. We want to bring efficiency and sustainability for infrastructure by using, like integrating automation, robotics, and really, um, I would say, a smart way to use concrete. <clears throat> so um, the world is really facing a huge uh, need for, for infrastructure. Um, the population grows and you, you, you're constructing a lot of buildings. Uh, everyone talks about 3D printed houses. But the problem is that to all these houses and all this population need water, need electricity, need also broadband, need uh, also heating infrastructure in some countries. And this is lacking everywhere. But beside this, we have also aging infrastructure in many countries like US and Canada that needs to be um, um, yeah, refurbished. And um, a lot of materials can be used for, for buildings uh, which are more sustainable than concrete. Definitely, this is what I believe. But for infrastructure, if you want to have a lifetime of 50, 75 years or even 100 years, concrete remains the most sustainable material. And that's what we uh, are addressing with Mobot as a first step. So market entry, I heard that you're working on your startup. Uh, startup is, uh, we are addressing a very, very tiny niche market, which are utilities. And um, why this utilities? Because uh, infra every infrastructure is really a unique. And a lot of uh, job sites or a lot of companies construct the same way since, uh, built the same way since about 50 years. So there's quite a lot of last minute modification on the uh, job site because of um, underground obstacles like here cables and underground, or they simply don't know what is happening. So they will order some prefabricated elements that will be modified on the job site. So this doesn't sound very, um, I would say uh, appealing, but the problem is that for every utility product or utility element, in average, a worker spend between three and six hours to modify each of these utilities. And this is a huge amount of wasted hours and resources. And this is what we are addressing, this problem of, um, of utilities and, and infrastructure. Today, the existing solutions are either, um, so maybe just to, to clarify for those that um, maybe are difficulties to, to understand what is a utility is simply uh, um, a concrete element that is underground like this one here, and that con is connecting water, electricity cables, energy cables. And these um, manholes need to be, um, um, reached by, by, by people in order to, to do maintenance, in order to uh, control the, the, the infrastructure. And there are a lot of this. So if you walk in the street, almost every 25 to 50 meter, you will find one of these. And today the existing solution are either you cast in place and uh, construction companies or contractor cast in place uh, every time there, there are underground obstacles. The problem is that this takes quite some time, um, between two, three days usually, but up to five days and even uh, sometimes even longer. A lot of companies are using prefabricated elements. The problem is that they are of course cheap, but they need to be adapted in 80% of the cases. And um, you might know the existing 3D printing. The problem is that for this types of application, this lacks of uh, structural integrity um, and needs to be refilled again with concrete a second time or with rebar. Um, beside this here, I see really a safety issue because uh, we are not allowed anymore on the job site to hold elements like, like this with uh, uh, transport elements like this. So you need anchoring also to have a safe transport. So our solution today is really to design um, is to design sorry um, uh, elements online to produce this bespoke product uh, thanks to an automated system using sprayed concrete, and then to be able to deliver them 24 hours later. 
today we have reached a pretty good uh, market acceptance. Uh, I don't know how to just take this one out. I don't know if you see here, maybe like this. Um, so we have reached a pretty good market acceptance with quite a lot of um, elements that have been delivered, uh, produced at our site and delivered. And um, Mobot is not, uh, so I founded the company about three years ago. And our first objective was just to show that uh, the technology is accepted by the contractors. So basically for 2018, 2019, 2020, we were working hard to, um, to show that uh, to contractors, to construction company end users that we are able to produce in a very fast way, uh, elements with a very good quality and deliver them the next day. Um, now we have entered a new I would say commercial phase since last year already, where uh, we are not only providing any more these elements like uh, utilities made out of concrete, but our objective is to provide the entire solution. So the entire hardware and software to contractors or concrete manufacturers. And now I will um, show you a couple of these example um, here, use cases as I call them. Um, and also guide you a bit, a bit on how our technology works today. There you go. So, um, oops. Today, our um, system enables um, is a, is a, what we provide basically to contractors and to concrete manufacturer is a, is a system that is composed of. Um, robots, uh, air compressor, a pump, an activator, and the entire printing head. Um, what we enable is, it's not only the hardware, we provide also that's the software that enable the, 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 the end user or the masons to, um, or the job site manager to uh, design the elements. And I will try to show you, I don't know if you see my screen, do you see my screen here? I'm trying to show you also the configurator. No, we don't see the configurator, just the slides. You might need to share your desktop yes. or... I'm trying again. Ah, uh, now we see it, yes. Yeah, does that work? Okay. So um, it's a combination of software and hardware of what, what we are offering. And um, we have designed a very easy uh, configurator, I would say. Um, that enable um, the user to operate the robots and also to send the drawings, but like also like the job site manager, as soon as he has taken his measurement, he's instead of uh, sharing them by, I would say he has to, doesn't need anymore to do a drawing. He just click on this configurator and enters the size of these elements and he sees live what is happening. So interior puts 90. 90 uh, centimeter. Let's put a height of 80 centimeter. Um, right now, a wall thickness. Um, let's make it a little bit bigger. Here, this is a telecommunication uh, manhole, usually 15 centimeter wall thickness. And then very often he has, as I said, um, he needs to, he has obstacles underground. So he needs to integrate um, either cables or he has obstacles. So he can generate uh, these obstacles on the, on, the, on the configurator, provides the shape here. You see that this is moving, this is dynamic. So he sees where he's placing the obstacle. And let's put it here, you see the simulation and here you see on the configurator the manhole with let's say a cable that enters here and let's make uh, the cables enter here and go out there so he can add another one let's put it here another existing cables again 40 centimeters and maybe slightly lower okay there you go and he can use this 
um, configurator adapt each of these elements in a very easy way. Um, he can generate a drawing. The drawing will generate already um, these elements and he can send this data um, either to Mobot or to his um, uh, concrete manufacturer pro uh, provider. Do you see again my uh, slideshow? Yes. You see? Okay, I came back now to again to my uh, slides. So, a second. There you go. So very easily, um, uh, he can use the the configurator. Uh, now, frankly said, not everyone used this because it's still, um, it's, I would say for the young generation, uh, young generation job site manager, they are, this really helps. And actually this configurator, we have developed this by testing it uh, with different job site managers, supervisors. Um, the older generation are still sending some drawings or still sending even just like uh, some measurements. But what we are basically enabling is if they want to use it, they, they, can, they can just send this data. The advantage of uh, having this configurator is that this is exactly the same data that I then read by the robot and, and sprayed by the robot. So here to, today we are really focusing on, I would say standard manholes or non-standard manholes, but uh, square elements, cylinders and beam. The, the volumes of the elements depends, of course, on the volume of a robot, and you all know how a, a robot works. So the longer the, it will be, the uh, smaller or less high the, it can spray the element. But if you want a really high element, of course, then the, the volume needs to be reduced or split it in, in a couple of pieces. Um, we are able to today to print elements of uh, width between eight and 15 centimeters, but also uh, sometimes 30 centimeters. We're using um, uh, all types of uh, aggregates up to eight millimeter. We, are, we have a, a recipe uh, which we use, which we have certified, but we are our technology really um, matches and uh, all types of aggregate cement types and yeah you can put any types of inserts or anchors that you want in, in this in this element um, now we have um, I would say a lot of 3d printing uh, companies are really focusing on freeform shaping on very architectural elements like a really nice nice elements. Um, I believe that in infrastructure, of course, you need also um, some nicely designed elements. But the problem here is not um, whether you have a double curve or, or double spline. The problem here is the, the problem of productivity and sustainability. So what we want to offer are really like a, a system that is um, that enables a mason like Valentin here to use a robot in a very safe way. So he um, he has his display with just a couple of buttons and basically it's stop, go, washing, and he, he can, through, through the configurator, load the elements or load the, 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 the configuration and the robot path planning, and then the robot is spraying as you see here. So the technology is a little bit different from what you have seen probably um, on at ETH or on YouTube. Um, so we, we have developed this, this technology and patented this technology, the, the fact of spraying between these two shapers. So on this um, robot, what you have is the printing head. You have what we call a rotational uh, stage, a shaper stage, and we spray here between these two shapers. Beside this, you see that the smoothening is done also by the robot, such that the overall surface is not, yeah, is rather, rather already smooth. So basically the, the, here the mason is, I would say very easily and in a very safe way, 
using this robot. And the, the, the goal is to, to, to produce these elements really to offer very high flexibility and also high productivity. Um, an element like this takes uh, customized, takes about one hour uh, to be produced and can be delivered the next day. Here, um, we have mixed um, the additive and subtractive technology. So we did not, when we develop um, Mobot on, as we are developing Mobot uh, on a daily basis, we are not focusing on the technology, but rather on the user experience and what does he need uh, to do in order to, to, to manipulate the robot. So we are really focusing like here when you need to, to use additive ma manufacturing, we, we're using additive manufacturing. But then if you need to cut at a certain height, then we change the tool, put a cutter, and it cuts really to a, uh, to a bespoke high. Um, oops. So now just a couple of use cases, and that's also how we um, are showing and explaining, I would say, the advantage of, of our technology. So usually for telecom manholes, um, yeah, you open the, the, the trench and a lot of these manholes are renovation. So these are existing structure from the 60s or the 17th. And then they build formwork around this for the concrete wait uh, a day and then we'll demold it. The problem of, of this is that it's quite long, takes a lot of um, uh, transport, we go back and forth to, to fetch the concrete and the contractors, what they do is they pour concrete against the, directly the trench. So they use high amount of concrete as well. So with our technology or our solution, I would say it's not even a technology, um, once they have designed on the configurator, they can print, they can send the data, it will be printed. It's, it's using, it takes about 30 minutes to, to, to spray an element like this. And then the next day we can deliver the elements uh, on the job site, including the, um, the, the lid. And this is done for two of these elements. This is done within two hours instead of the two days, two to three days that it would usually take. Um, so the customer, like for here, in, for instance, the head of civil works, for him, it's really like he has one uh, person um, where he orders the elements and he's saving a lot of time but also the resources, because usually he had um, two to three days, so he had to plan his resources to build these elements for at least two days within a week. And here within two hours, yeah, it's um, produced, done, and then he can close the trench. And on top of that, he's, uh, he saves also quite a substantial amount of CO2 as he, he can use less concrete and it's only one transport instead of multiple transport back and forth. Um, another use case I would say is this one. Um, it's the integration in Beam. So today more and more companies are using Beam for buildings, but it's still very, I would say at the early stage for infrastructure. But here we have also um, basically uh, worked with uh, the company Lozinger Mahadzi, most of you know it. Um, where we have generated um, also the, the elements uh, for their beam model. And we have optimized the wall thickness such that we could save 25%, uh, at least 25% of concrete, fully customized, zero reference. And once we arrived on the job site, it's really just like the plug and play for, um, for the workers. So it's also more ergonomic, more safe for, for the workers. And this helps on the entire value chain to uh, put the resources where they are needed. Um, as um, we are not uh, only focusing on, on manhole today, our, I would say, offer is really on these types of elements, but uh, just to show you that we can do also other things. This is a bridge, um, a competition for a bridge here in Fribourg, uh, the architect, uh, Civil engineering has thought about um, these types of uh, prefabricated elements. Um, 
put on top of each other, like it's about 200 different elements prefabricated, a double spline. And um, the idea was to have a parametric design using a very nice shape, but also reusing the soil uh, excavation in order to, to, to have them um, to, to build this bridge. Um, here we have, this was back in 2019, well, one of our first projects where we really went out of, I would say, standard, standard uh, shapes and showed that, um, well, the technology enables quite uh, a lot of freedom of shape as well. Here, yeah, just a, a joke also for Christmas, uh, we thought, okay, let's put, uh, make a sustainable Christmas tree. Then uh, the Blue Factory here, the Smart Living Lab can use it every year. Um, that was just uh, from our side, just a joke, just to see how we are able also to, to make more complex elements. And, and also just before Christmas was uh, quite a nice team building. Um, this is also to this one is it to illustrate that we usually spray the concrete between these two shapers, but we are not only limited to that. We can also um, produce elements with uh, 20, 25, or even 30 centimeters uh, thickness, such as uh, this beam here, which was also sprayed and um, with a counter mold, as you see here, such that we can put the um, the, the lid on top of that. Um, what I found very interesting also are the mechanical properties. So um, we have drilled cores in uh, the elements made with our technology compared to, I would say, casted uh, elements. And as soon as you want to enter the market with a technology, you have to prove that, yes, the mechanical properties are similar to precast. Yes, you can integrate rebars. So basically, in terms of dimensioning, in terms of whatever the engineer know, it's not changing anything. And just here to show you, basically, a couple of, depending on the wall thickness, the one day strength or the three day strength, tensile strength on uh, these elements compared to the casted cubes. So you see that uh, the one day strength, tensile strength, or the three standardized strength is absolutely similar or even sometimes better than the casted elements. And same for 28 day strength. So basically this is the casted cube. These are 28 day strength drilled in the walls in different direction. So we can really guarantee basically that by spraying, uh, using our technology, controlling the parameters uh, in, a, in, a, in a very automated way, we can ensure a very good quality. And I think um, one of the most important aspects is also for us when we started was to show that our technology is um, very versatile, robust, and can adapt to any types of uh, raw material. And one of the U USP, so unique selling Position is that our customer can use their own concrete, their own cement, their own aggregates. We can suggest some uh, some recipes, but we have shown that we are using um, almost any type of cement and raw material, which has a huge impact on the circular economy. And this is also where we want to, to head and where we are heading is really like, now it's not anymore possible, uh, only possible to design your elements uh, and reduce the amount of concrete and uh, uh, associate function with, with foam. It's also being able to use local raw materials. And here it, uh, we have used, uh, we're working with Honsim for, for this partnership where we, we can integrate alternative cements, even 45% of recite recycled aggregates and we really want to push towards this um, yeah, circular economy of infrastructure. So what characterize our, I would say, solution? So it's not only the technology, but really like from the perspective of um, the customer that will take our solution, he can design the elements as he used to design them. Uh, so um, in terms of performances, 
um, he can just really, uh, he has the freedom of, of designing them. He can use conventional material, local raw materials, so he can, can really save also uh, a, a significant amount of, of uh, I would say, it's quite easy for him to, to adapt. And of course, we can also integrate some, uh, some rebars in these elements. Um, in order to achieve that, of course, there was a lot, a lot of mistakes, a lot of failure, and uh, it took us really a long time to, to reach uh, what we, where we are today. Um, these are pictures that I do not show usually, but it's really like uh, you see tons of yeah, try and error. This was back in 2018, just before yeah, filing the, the patent. We, we were trying and error, trying and error to, until we, we, we reached a, a good, I would say, acceptable um, uh, method. And you see that every time we, we try to progress, we, we do a, a, a test. It's not always good, sometimes it fails like here, but um, we are always pushing every time a, a little bit one step further. Um, first, what our system is capable of doing. Second, the automation. Third, the robotics know-how. And, and fourth, I, I would say the team building because uh, it's quite important when, when you're in a startup, uh, you have a lot, a lot of uh, failures and not so many, um, I would say, uh, successes. So you really have, uh, you need very strong, I would say, uh, team and uh, strong, I would say, collaboration with the others such that, yeah, uh, you try and uh, again and again. So today um, we are 12 people. Uh, we have uh, developed a certain expertise on four core say technological expertise. The first one is the aerodynamic of sprayed concrete, because you can imagine that spraying concrete at us of, yeah, with eight millimeter grain size between two shapers of about 10 centimeters is not that easy. So we are able to control the spraying angle. We are able to model and uh, predict uh, the properties of, of, of the particles. We have developed our technology also around uh, automation and robotics. And last but not least, we have also um, yeah, achieved a certain know-how in sustainable construction materials. And that's also where we want to push. It's not only about the technology, it's really a solution that is co coherent towards a circular e economy for infrastructure. 